Hi there, welcome back to, to a new project. We've got a good old fashioned building video for you, but building something for the veg garden. And so some of these logs that you see here, and maybe some that you see in the far distance, we're gonna turn into raised beds, a nice natural, organic, rustic looking construction with a Hugel culture infill for doing all sorts of growing experiments, medicinals, edibles, all sorts of stuff. So let's see what happens. So you'll, yeah, have to, yeah, yeah. you'll have to sort. Oh, I will, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to fall away, so it's a little bit off, but... Sure, that's close enough. Within five to ten mil, I'm happy with. So yeah, I want this then to go all the way across. Because that one's going to sit on top of this. Take the bark off or not? No. Let's leave it for now then, because obviously you can't put it back. I think I want it off. I'm trying to find the best way for it to let the lay on the ground, which I think is on this side down. Okay. So we'll cut it there. Or actually, we might be able to use the whole thing, right? Uh, pretty happy with that. <laughs> I like things being right. Even with non straight wood. I know. There's a and joke in there a, somewhere. On a sloping ground. Good. Yeah. Down a bit towards you. How's that? What are you tell me. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now it I think we need a second small one on here. I think this has to be infill for this because I don't think this is a square yet. Okay. Well, this is going to make it quite interesting. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. One sixteen. Mm-hmm. One sixteen. Where did my picture? Here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's not bad. And we just need a bank fill a little bit. Yeah, you can just again put the spirit level on this one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Right, let me just chuck a bit of this under there. Nice. Do you want to cut it first? I think we have to because otherwise it's going to overrun. I could just move this piece out of the way. Yeah, let's just do that. Then you can run it on the inside and we can have a look. Oh yeah, let's do that. I mean, these logs aren't 100% and when we take the bark off, we might sit a bit better. Maybe. Um, but that is not, not great. Is it too much or can we just fill it with bark up to the edge? I think we can just bark it. Because that's what I did down the other end of the garden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, easy. Okay. Let's do that then. Let's do that. This actually goes. Oh, oh I can't the wall again, I suppose. It goes like that. Yeah, like yeah. that. Right what happened? No, no, that one goes on the ground. 
Oh, that goes like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Do you like that? A little bit more my way. This is not how it was. Maybe we use the other. Let's go with this one. Maybe it was like that. Yeah, we can do that. I still can't see a mark. <laughs> Yeah, like that. Yeah, and here. Yeah. Oh, that's my delivery. Thank you. Look at that car. It's very nice. Go and show the lovely people. Oh, hi, lovely people. You're still there. We have some yarns. I hate it when you buy off the internet and you have to guess the colours. I love that you went from impact driving <laughs> to yarn. Yes. Yes, I'm good. Can you twist that around the uh, flip it? Yeah. See if that fits good. Yeah, that fits good. So things were going quite well. And then we stood back to admire our handiwork and we're really struggling with the level of things. So uneven logs, which you would expect because they're trees, not planed softwood. But more than that, an uneven piece of land. And so trying to use something that's not level to combat something that's not level is surprisingly difficult. So we're having to think about options at the moment um, because whilst it is designed to be a rustic build, we don't want it to look weird and wonky and completely out of place. So um, we may build it level with the land so a spirit level wouldn't say it's level, but it would probably look better because there wouldn't be three logs on one side and two logs on the other. Uh, or we might get some stakes, uh, like fence posts in each corner and make it physically level um, and then find a way of filling in underneath. Or we might just go and have a drink. <laughs> That is a bit better. Okay. So you're going to stand back and tell me when you look from that direction. Yeah, that looks a bit better. It's, then, it's still but, a little bit bendy. But then I want it like that to come up under this one, right? Well, then it doesn't look level at all. But then I can put a wedge in here and then the bark will come to it. Can you see what the problem is here? Yes, I see what the problem or is. Or we have to replace it with a thicker piece. This looks very similar to how it did about six hours ago. Uh, six hours ago? Okay, maybe four. Ready? Mm-hmm. So, it's definitely not level, but <laughs> nor is the earth, the ground on which it sits. But before it wasn't level and we tried to make it level. Um, there's just too many undulations and stuff, so I think we're going to go with this, but who knows, around here anything could happen. Uh, should we try and get one more layer in before yep. we call it a day? Yep. We'll try and get one more layer in before we call it a day. This 
this is in the right place. No, it's not. No. This is not being cut to length. So you need to go. Yes, that makes <laughs> more sense. I was getting confused. It's got a tiny gap there, but yeah. And then that's going to be done. Yep. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about these logs. They are native pine and they were actually destroyed or burnt during the fires of 2017. We picked them up from some friends of ours who have a property in Pedrogo Grande, which is the epicenter of where those terrible fires were uh, in 2017. And they've got a really large forest area and these trees were just littered all over the floor. They died standing up, but over time, they've fallen over. So as part of their land clearing efforts, they've been pulling out all of these trees and trying to use them in some way on their property. And we saw the raised beds that they had built and really liked the look of them. They've got a really nice rustic charm to them. And because they've got so many of these trees, they said, well, hey, why don't you come and, and pick some up? I think we've taken two pickup loads so far, probably about 40 of these logs in total. We've cut them all to about two meters, maybe two meters 20 and we're gonna use them in as many places as we can for these kinds of rustic structures. But it's really nice to be able to use something that is essentially a waste product or a nuisance product that is getting in the way of our friends clearing their land and putting them to good use. On the inside of the beds, we're gonna line them with some landscape fabric just because there are a few gaps in them because they're not perfectly straight and level, um, but I think that will work out quite nicely. So let's get back to the build. Very optimistic that we uh, we can get this done today. I say, should say, the frame done today. But then I'm the optimistic one, right? Are you? <laughs> you look like you're going on an Arctic exploration. <laughs> it's cold. I think it was five or six degrees when we woke up this morning. It's a little bit warmer. The sun has just started shining, and I really feel the cold. This is why we don't live in the UK anymore. <laughs> Along my side, like that. Yeah, so I just need to cut a little bit off. So, can you just step back and look at the gaps and stuff? There you go. There's not much gap at all. Which is good. There's a bit on your just at the end there because that yeah. one is lower. Though. That's fine. Okay, yeah, mark that. We can do that one. So, running along here. Yeah, can you flip it over because it's got a cut? Uh, angled end on it. Uh. So maybe both ends are angled. It's not So, good news. We've completed the fourth layer of the first L-shaped one, but we have many more logs. So we're gonna build a second one, simpler, smaller, and hopefully we can get that done today as well. And then we've got to do all the posts and the hardware cloth and the lining. Whew, out of breath. This end is more or less, are you happy with that being squared? Is that square to This you? end is okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Should have got a chainsaw then. <laughs> I told you. I will buy one. Maybe it will be an Easter present to myself. Well, maybe when your sister comes, we can go chainsaw shopping together. Oh. Family bonding. <laughs> so we're going around the right way, right? So this is going to start here. Mm -hmm. And that actually goes in there a bit, so I'm going to come out to there. 82. So I think it just needs to be.
I know. Micro measures. <laughs> Not a perfectionist. No. 86. Bendy logs. Bendy logs, yeah, very bendy. 86. That'll be good enough. So it is almost lunchtime, but the rain is coming, so we're going to take a slightly early lunch. But good news, we have made two raised beds. They're not finished, but we've got the frames in place. We will be putting in some posts, securing it all together, hardware cloth in the bottom. But we still have more logs left. So we might do a small square one just to complete the trilogy and uh, give us more space for experimenting and growing more stuff. But the weather isn't great right now, so we'll take a break. Alrighty, it's a new day back on the raised bed project. We went shopping yesterday, I think, to collect some supplies, some hardware cloth, some fence posts, some landscape fabric, and a post knocker. Because at the moment, all of these raised beds that we've built are really just frames. None of these logs are fixed together. Uh, they're fixed to each other in each layer but we want to make it a little bit more sturdy. We also want to put in place infrastructure for trellising, shade cloth, um, netting, stuff like that. If we need to keep the pests or keep the birds or keep the cat out. So that's what we're going to do today. And hopefully we'll get this finished and we'll call this kind of raised bed part one with the build of it. And then we'll come back and do another video with the Hugel culture and the filling and maybe some planting. We're gonna see if we can cover up some of these gaps with some landscape fabric, knock some posts in, and uh, yeah, see how we go. So how high are you gonna go with the, the so fabric? It's 300. Yeah. So we probably don't wanna come right to the top, because you'll see it, because we aren't gonna fill all the way to the top with compost. Yeah, but it's, it'll be black anyway, so... So then tell me. Well. I think we want to come up to about here. That's what I said, 300. Oh, 300. And it can fold down on the inside, so yeah, we yeah, staple yeah. it to the top and then fold the rest down. But, yeah. yeah, but in a couple of places, so that it doesn't blow up like, yeah. it, like this, so. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're doing this the wrong way around, because the wind is coming from this way. If we turn it over, It's horrible stuff, isn't it? Yep. I don't know, these green things that they've woven through it. 
they're markers to help you cut. Uh -huh. So they're at every 150 or something. Okay, so there's your 300. Thank you very much. Is it in where you want it? Yeah. Next time, they warn me. I thought you were ready. <laughs> they didn't even slam something down on my head. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Meter standing up above the thing. Above the what? Above the top here, where you're yeah, measuring. So that's from. a meter. That's, that's a less meter. than a meter. Okay, well, I think that looks good. I think we said originally we're only going to go. Oh no, 600. Yeah. So we can go deep, deeper, yeah, right? Yeah, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> They're going in pretty easy. Yeah, they are. So if we go almost down to here. So what's that for? Yeah. Okay, well, let's do that then. <laughs> Ready? You say that when you're about to hit. No. <laughs> Are you ready to be ready? <laughs> ready, ready? Ready. Now you say ready. Oh, na Are you ready now? <laughs> yeah. Are you? Going anywhere. Microplastics. We'll clear all those up. I'm just filling in some of these gaps. Do you want to tell me about your dislike of this plastic? Uh. I, I didn't want to buy it in the first place because it's plastic, but I didn't realize, or I've never used it before, and I didn't realize how, actually how bad it is, and there's little bits everywhere. It's just and fraying on all the yeah, cut edges. Yeah, and the reason I didn't want to use it in the first place is you end up with plastic in your soil, which is obviously not a good thing. But I couldn't think up of a really a good enough alternative. We did consider, we did discuss using Hessian, because they have that and we have used that. Um, for another project. So yeah, I think on the next raised beds we'll get Hessian. It, it will break down, but over a really long period of time, like at least a year plus. Kind of disappointed that I didn't get it when we thought about it in the first place, but you learn by doing. I thought this would, would work, but I'm just really not happy with the amount of all these tiny little pieces. Like, let me just show you. Just, just pieces like this from where I've cut it are now all over our grass and I have to pick them all up and this landscape fabric over time five ten years will also disintegrate because it's really thin and then we'll end up with bits of plastic in um in our raised bed so well do we want to pause using it and get some hessian instead yeah so hessian <laughs> So we're going to use this hessian. Uh, these were old coffee bags um, that we bought from the local farm shop. And I unpicked them so that we could use them like this. But they will make perfect edges. Can you explain why we've put them up here on the wall? So lots of stuff keeps coming down off our walls, as is evidenced by all the crap on the ground. So I lined loads of our walls with blankets and hessian to try and stop the dust and the muck falling all over the floor so we don't have to clean it up all the time. We will use these and then I'll get some more coffee bags and unpick them and then hang them back up here. <laughs> we want to tick this project off the list. Always. Much. No, 
nice uh, The, uh, the mesh, the wire mesh on the, on the bottom of this middle bed here is a prototype for some vole proofing. In the, the main beds behind us, in the main veg garden, we've grown things like onions and carrots and even some kind of brassicas and have had issues with the voles eating the roots or in the case of carrots, eating the crop. So one of the things that we wanted to do as a test here is to try and vole proof it from underneath by putting in this wire mesh a little bit like you might protect around the outside of a chicken enclosure or a chicken coop to see if we can save our carrots so part one of this project is done for now which is very exciting it was a bit hit and miss with the weather, but we managed to get it done in three half days, I guess. A little bit later on, we will come back and fill these and plant some stuff in them. We have prepared a little bit of a uh, makeshift trellis for some peas that we've got growing and need to plant out sometime soon. So uh, definitely join us for that sometime in the future. Let's uh, go and see what Kylie thinks of her handiwork. Hold on a second. That's heavy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh... So, Raised beds, a success, yeah. happy. I want to fill this whole area with raised beds now. Um, probably a little bit more difficult to build than, than we anticipated. And I originally wanted to do half laps for each of the tree over the, what do you call them? The logs. Yeah, the logs, <laughs> the logs be so glad we didn't do that. Yeah. Um, right. Would have been a bit unnecessary. And um, way more difficult. Yeah, I didn't want to be able to see the fixings, but I think over time I won't see the fixings. Much, much, much happier with the Hessian, or Hessian, as I would call it in Australian. Sacus de jute. Those, just the plastic. Didn't, yeah, it was horrible. It was really not good at all. So this is much better. Um, looks better, and I will know that our veggies are coming out of a plastic-free environment oh my words today <laughs> plastic free bed god i can't think not a big big fan of the posts again i'll get used to them i do however like the posts for the pea trellis that we put so as a piece of functionality they work really well and that would be the same when we use them for shade cloth and netting um yeah they'll they'll work they, yeah they'll really they work. just look a bit odd at the moment yeah visually maybe i have to make them a bit more pretty Maybe if I stick something into the end with decorations or... Sounds lovely. <laughs> no. Yeah, really happy. Um, really happy. And the vole proofing will be interesting to see this one. So we slid this underneath the frame and then because of the width of it, it's only wrapped up at the two ends. So I'll be interested to see if the little buggers can get in the side. I imagine they can, so we'll see. That's why it's a prototype. Yeah. So in here we're hoping to put um, carrots because we definitely had carrot issues last year with voles. I want to put some potatoes in here as well, just to see how potatoes fare in a raised bed. And we'll put some onions in again and spring onions maybe, just to make sure, it should be a guaranteed crop with our vole proof experiment, but we'll see. So there we go, another successful project. Join us in the future for part two. We've got to go and tidy up and then get out of this not very nice weather. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. bye bye you going to get the voles? Are you going to get them? Oh, okay. <laughs>